Hi, this is Kate from Isilicious Designs. So today I thought I'd show you how to make my little tiny tot panda. Now, I should say, the bear pattern doesn't have to be done as a, as a panda. You can change up the colours and make him into a little bear as well, okay? So this is going to be my little bear pattern. Um, as I said, change up the colours, perfectly fine. Um, but I'm going to do a panda just to show you because I think it's a little bit more difficult with the eyes um, if you're doing the bear you just do all one color you don't actually have to do the swapping of colors for the eyes so we'll do the panda today so that you can do that one easily um, and then this one you can easily do by yourself using exactly the same pattern but without changing the colors all right, so what are we going to need to do? We're going to need some safety eyes. I'm using these little blue ones. I think they're actually rather nice. I got them from Hobby Lobby. Um, they're quite small. I think they might be, let's see, um, a five, a six, a seven maybe. Seven millimeter, something like that. They're not terribly big. I think they're a little smaller than a nine. They could be a nine. I'm I'm really not sure. But those are what I've... Oh, here's a nine. Let's have a look. Well, they probably are about a nine. I think they are about a nine. So about a nine millimetre and they're blue and they have this little washer that I've already popped on the back. You're going to need stitch markers. If you don't have the commercial stitch markers like this, you can use a C-clip, an S-clip, uh, a bobby pin, a hair, you know, a hair pin, um, safety pin, paper clip. All of those sorts of things work. Now, you are going to prepare your arms prior. Now, up here on the top right is a little eye. If you click on that eye, it will give you the link on where to make the arms. I'm also going to put it in the description. But you will need two arms. Now, I had somebody say to me, normally I keep my arms on a stitch marker like this. And I had somebody say to me, but what happens if I don't have a stitch marker like you've got? You can use anything. This is a, a skewer from the kitchen, um, just a little wooden skewer that, that I do for kebabs and stuff like that. Um, you can use something like that. You can use another hook if you happen to have another hook or a pencil. It's just something to hold the, this on so it doesn't unravel. OK, so really it's up to you what you've got. Chopstick, anything like that. All right. So you don't have to have a stitch marker to hold them. You can use anything you have that is lying around. So make the arms. They are going, you're going to make two. Uh, they're all going to be black. You don't have to have a color change at all. So just completely black. Okay. So that's important. We are going to start. We have a little snout to make and we have a little head to make. So we'll start with that. I'm going to assume that you will make the, uh, make the arms. All right. So let's make the little snout first. Now, how we're going to do this is you start with a ma you're going to start with a magic ring, but you're doing a magic ring in black. So take a black band and wrap it once and twice. Now, I do like to use my um, stitch marker. If you don't have a stitch marker to help you make your magic ring, you can do it with just your hook. You can do it with the loomy loom. You can do it with a peg of your loom. It is completely up to you. If you choose to use a peg of your loom, and we'll do it this way today, take a single band and wrap it just like you would on your hook. With the open part of the peg facing away from you, you wrap it once and twice. Okay, make sure that's secure. Now, we're going to do a magic ring of five. We're going to do three in black and two in white. So push your hook down, okay? You're going to pull back your first black band and do a little slip knot like so and budge it round. That's our first stitch. Push your hook back down, okay? We're doing the second black band, one over the other and pull through and budge around. Our third black band. Now, this is where we're going to change to a white band. So we kind of have to do a slip stitch. So you pull your white band through. You're going to add the loop, that black loop, you're going to add onto this white band. Okay? And then just do one over the other. It's a little bit different. Budget round and get your second white band. 
and pull it through and this one just goes as normal like so so you have that little slip stitch there okay move this around so it's a magic circle not a magic semicircle now all we're using now is white so this is our first stitch here push your hook through it and we're going to do a single crochet okay and put your stitch marker on that that's our first stitch you're going to do another single crochet in that same stitch because we're doing an increase that's two in the first stitch let's go into the second stitch we're doing two in here so we're doing two all the way around so we're going from five stitches to ten here's our third stitch which is black one and two now you'll notice there's our little slip stitch we're going into our first real white stitch because you miss your slip stitch so there's one and two and here's our last stitch one and two let's count our stitches one two three four five six seven eight nine and number ten is on our hook so that's how it's going to look it's a little bit odd I know now we're going to go and do a single crochet all the way around so here's our first one move your stitch marker to it you're not doing an increase in any of them just a single crochet all the way around and I should have mentioned the only colors you're going to be using for this design are black and white if you're doing the panda if you're doing a, a bear of some other sort then it's up to you what colors you use So this is a single crochet all the way around like so. We're going to do another round of single crochet. So go back into your first stitch, move your stitch marker and as I mentioned this is his little snout. no increases or decreases you're just going to have 10 stitches And this is our last stitch and I'm going to pop it on my stitch marker. Now, if you don't have this kind of locking stitch marker, just use a C-clip. Okay, that works perfectly fine. Stretch it out just a little bit. But as you can see, that's his little snout. That's going to sit on the front of his face just like this. So I'll put that to one side. We've done that. Okay, so we've got his arms. We've got his snout. Next thing we need to do is his head. Okay, so... I'm going to put black bands away. Let's start with a head. We're going to do a magic ring of six. So take your first band, wrap it around your hook twice. Get six bands ready. Four, five, six. Pull the first one through. And one over the other. Push your hook back through. Here's our second. Make sure you're going through all three loops. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Spread them around. You want to make sure that, as I said, it's a magic circle, magic ring, not a magic semicircle. You're going to push your hook through that first stitch. Okay, we're doing an increase all the way around. So there's our first single crochet. Pop your stitch marker on that. 
and then you're going to do another single crochet in that same stitch and then let's do that again in each and every stitch until we get back to the stitch marker crazy cat time at the moment. They're running around chasing each other. So this has taken our stitch count from six in our magic ring to twelve. Okay. All right, so here's our first stitch for our next round. We're going to do a single crochet followed by an increase. There's our first single crochet. Move our stitch marker. Second stitch is going to be an increase. Single crochet. And we finish on an increase. Our next round is going to be two single crochets followed by an increase. So let's do our first single crochet. Move your stitch marker. Our next single crochet and an increase. One, two, and an increase. One, and an increase and we finish on an increase so this is the top of his head okay so now all we're going to do is eight rounds of single crochet but this is where we have the fun part of adding the black for his eyes when we need to okay so we have a formula we need to go by our first round is going to be completely white single crochet. No black added yet. So here's our first stitch. Put your stitch marker onto that. And around we go. No increases, just single crochet.
Well, hello, kittens. tiny herd of elephants scampering around the house. So all single crochet and all white for this first round. Now this is our first stitch here. Our first eight stitches are going to be white. So go through your first stitch single crochet this is number one okay two three four five six seven and eight so I'm going to put eight bands well seven bands because I've got one here then we're going to do two one and two in black then we're going to do four in white then we're going to do two in black and then we're going to do eight in white. All right. So if you want to get your bands ready, you can. So let's go and do our eight. So this is number two, three, four, five, six. seven and eight. Now we're changing to black so we need to do a slip stitch for our first one. Pull it through, add your white loop. Slip stitch in the second stitch next to it you do another black. Just a normal single crochet. Then we're doing four white but again we have to do a slip stitch. So through, add your black loop, slip stitch and we continue doing our other three in white We're going to change to black again. So again, it's going to be a slip stitch. Add the loop, slip stitch. The next one is going to be black. Single crochet. Our next stitch and all the way around to the stitch marker is white. So slip stitch and around we go. Okay, our next round, seven white single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're doing three black, one, two, three, three white, one, two, three, three black. One, two, three, and eight white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that is what we're doing next. Seven white, three black, three white, three black, and eight white. So let's go through our first stitch. Pop our stitch marker on, around we go. Now, we have to do a colour change. Here's our last white stitch. Take your black band through and add the loop of your white for your slip stitch. This little black stitch here is a slip stitch, so go through your real stitch with your black band. And with the next one. Right next to that is a slip stitch, so go through your real white stitch 
the colour changing again so we have to do a slip stitch colour changing again go through this white stitch changing colour to black so add your loop slip stitch here's a slip stitch we're missing going into the real stitch Again, we're colour changing, miss the slip stitch, go into the real stitch, add your loop, slip stitch, and around we go to the stitch marker with white. Okay, now we have six white. Let's get our six white. Two, four, five, six white, three black, four white, three black, and eight white. One, two, three, four, five six seven and eight okay so six white three black four white three black and eight white go through your first stitch move your stitch marker let's use our white bands up and then we'll do a slip stitch as we colour change to black. So in this last white stitch we're colour changing. So add your loop, slip stitch. There's a slip stitch, miss it, go to your black stitch. One, and the next one. Two. This last black stitch we're doing is a white. So through, add your loop, slip stitch, skip it, go into your real stitch. One. And the next one. In this last white stitch we're doing white. Skip your slip stitch, go into your black stitch. You're going to add a slip stitch and then keep going with your black bands. One and two. Miss the slip stitch, go into the real stitch. We have a slip stitch to do here. And then we just continue around in white. like so. Now you'll be pleased to know that is the end of what we need to do for our um, our black bands. Placing the eyes, it is going to be tricky when you place them because they're not completely even if you look you know where one end starts the other finishing so you kind of have to do a little bit of fancy footwork how you place them you can place them now or you can place them later. They probably should be at the top of this black part so that it comes down. I have not done these ones particularly at the top, but they, they probably should be more at the top than the, than the lower area, uh, just if you want them to look like a more real panda. But it's completely up to you where you put them 
and where you feel it looks good but you do want them even so how you place them is important like I think that one's too much in the white so you want to sort of scuffle around until you get it and that one has a little bit of black poking out so you might want to adjust so that you have a little bit of black band poking out but that, that's going to be a little difficult because if you do it like that that's too much of the black band poking out so you kind of have to wing it a bit and probably for me that would be how I would have mine so we now have round five six seven and eight of our single crochets okay so there's one two three and four more rounds to do and they're all going to be white there is no more black to add for the face okay so through your front first stitch take one from your little counting pile and we are going to do four rounds of single crochet and I will meet you back when we have all done that. I'm going to do the first round with you because you've got the slip stitches to miss and I wouldn't want anybody to mess up and add an extra stitch by mistake by going through the slip stitch. So here's our slip stitch. We're going to ignore it and go through the real stitch. Here's our next stitch. Oops, one band. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Here's our next stitch. Sometimes putting the eyes in a little bit early makes it difficult, but I do like to see where I'm placing them. This is a slip stitch. We're missing it. Go into the real stitch. There's a slip stitch right next to this white stitch. Right here, miss it, go into your real stitch. My last black band. Miss the slip stitch, go into the real stitch. Okay, we're going to do another round. Take your one from the counting pile, move your stitch marker, and I will meet you. We've got this round and two more to do after it. I will meet you when we've all done that, okay? So I'll catch you back. So I've completed my four white rounds um, of single crochet. Now would be a good time to think about ears. So we're going to do the ears in black. If you're looking for your magic ring, it's actually quite easy to see it from the inside. As you can see, I've got it right here in the centre. So I'm going to take a toothpick. I'm just going to pop it through, okay, just so that I know where the centre is. Because sometimes if you look this way, you, you get a bit lost. So with my toothpick in the middle, I need to basically have one whole space either side. And then I'm going to have my ear going from one side here and I'm going to have it sort of tilted a little bit like so and I'm going to pull a band back and just hold it there and I'm going to match up on the other side so I've got one whole space here one whole space here so I'm probably going to go from here up okay and you want to make sure that you have these angled the same otherwise it's going to look a little odd so as you can see, that one is angled wrong, very, very wrong. This is my space. I probably need to go maybe here. So it's trial and error to make sure that you get it at the same angle on both. Let me see. Um, there's a gap. I've got through here with a gap. 
through here with the guy. That might work. Um, I think this will work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to place my hook through the first one. Okay. Now we're going to do basically a magic ring. Four, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so take it. I'm using magic ring seven. I'm going to take my second band and pull it through that loop of black and do a little slip knot. Now, instead of having an actual end cap to go through, I'm going to use this loop of the first band. Okay, so if I pull that together like that, this is the space that I'm going to go through. So, this is two. two, three, I can take rid of my, my uh, toothpick, four, five, six, and back again, make sure I'm at the end. There we go. Seven. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pinch the little loop that is on my hook. Okay, that's my little loop for my ear. Come back here, you. There we go. Now, from the inside, I'm going to poke my hook in through the hole that that black band started in okay and I'm going to take that loop and pull it back inside the head I'm going to find a little loop inside the head this one works just fine oh, I've gone through three there I just want to go through one or two and I'm just going to take a white band pull it through and tie in a slip knot okay and that's how I did the little ear I'm going to do the same on this side. Go through one side and the other. And pull off. We need seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that there's our first one. And loop it. And now that little gap there is where we're using what we're using as our end cap to do our magic ring in. Just like doing a magic ring. There's my last band. I'm going to grab the little loop that's on my hook, put my hook through the inside, up through the hole where that black band was, pull it through, and again, we need to find a little stitch on the inside to tie it into so that it's secure. Like so. And that is how I did the ears. Now, if you want to move them, of course you can. You do you do a little magic ring wherever you want them to be. Like I can actually see now that this one could quite possibly have come forward a bit, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I uh, ears ears are never exactly um identical, are they? even in real life. So that's my ears. Now we need to do some decreases. So grab your loop again and we are going to do a round of single crochet, single crochet decrease and it's going to be a hidden decrease. So here is our first single crochet. Move your stitch marker. Second stitch, single crochet, third stitch and fourth stitch you're going through the back loop only of both of those stitches and drawing a band through the two of them for your hidden decrease and we're going to do this all the way around so one single crochet two single crochet and then the next two stitches you go through the back only 
pull your band through and let's do this all the way around one two And finish on our decrease. Our next round is going to be single crochet and decrease. So here's our first stitch, single crochet. <laughs> Herd of elephants charges in and a decrease. Again, a hidden decrease. <laughs> single crochet and decrease they're playing tag they hide from each other one hides from the other and then they charge after each other finding each other silly girlies And I have to go and rescue <laughs> Izzy's homework. One of them likes to eat paper. And I can hear her right now. So I'm going to put this down and go and rescue the homework. I'll be right back. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. There's some great big uh, chew marks in, uh, <laughs> in Izzy's homework. Oh, dear. All right, the snout. We have our little snout that we made earlier. Okay, and... I have just tied off I think I left it on a stitch marker so uh, what I did took my stitch back onto my hook and slid this through as a tie off okay that's what you want to do now you're going to try and do this if you turn this around like this okay this bit at the top is going on the top of the snout so you really want either side of the top to have a band, an anchor band. Okay, so I'm going to put another anchor band here. My neighbour is doing something in his garage. Can you hear that? It sounds like a drill. And then go at the opposite side and do two little anchor bands down the bottom as well. One and go through both loops. Gosh, it sounds like I'm in a dentist office. <laughs> so there's four little anchor bands, okay? Now, as I mentioned, these two go at the top and the other two go at the bottom. Now, I'm also going to put the top ones through near the eyes, okay? So with my hook going from the inside, I'm going to poke my hook out here, all right, and take the first one, make sure you've got your nose angled correctly, and then I'm going to poke the other one, I want it to be in the same line, same row, I'm going to take the other one, pull that here, okay, and I'm just going to do one over the other, and keep one on my hook. Now, keeping that one on my hook, I'm going to try and move down and it is trial and error where this goes I'm going to do one over the other and then I'm going to go to the other side and pull that one through 
and again one over the other I'm going to put my stitch marker S clip C clip whatever on that last stitch before I tie it in because what I want to do is make sure that I'm happy with where this is positioned and if you look I could actually probably do these out either side one more I think it would look less like a dog and more splayed out so I'm going to hook this other stitch marker up a little bit higher so it's out of my way there we go keep out the way you so I'm working on this stitch marker so my two bottom ones I want those to come out a little further so let's put my hook back in I'm going to unravel these that's three I'm still trying to keep two one and two on my hook so I'm unraveling three and four there we go so I'm going to come out one uh, maybe I'll put it here see how that one feels Am I still, oh, I'm still still holding on to it. When I said keep it on your hook, I meant it. Let's see how that feels over there. And this one maybe over here. Let's see. Let's put it through. Let's see how I feel about that. And that one's in line with that one. This one could come over a bit more. I feel let's try here I think that's going to be all right so I'm going to loop those over again I'm going to put my stitch marker on just to test that I have it in the right spot let's see yes I think that's a little better now I have only anchored this with four bands if you want to go into the little spaces where there's gaps you can tie one through like this okay and pull it through to the back and you can secure more and again you can you can just secure them by finding a little spot on the back here okay like this and just anchor them down you don't have to loop them all into each other you can just anchor each of them down like this if you want to okay just so that you have uh, more a more secure snout so if you want to go in this one here again link it through find the spot from the inside where you want to go I might want to go here pull it in okay there's my little band here, my little loop, and tie it off. So this is how you can add extra anchor bands to it, should you choose to. It's completely up to you. I've just done the four. Now my final band here, which I had on my stitch marker because I was just making sure that I liked where it was positioned, I'm just going to go back into one of these stitches here. And let's see, I'll go up the top here and I'm just going to loop it in so that I know that it's not going to go anywhere. They're all just going to be in the head anyway. And that is, and I'm not stuffing it. Now I can see that I've probably pulled this one a little a bit too far. I could pull this one a little further out too. Might look better if I do that. There we go, there's a the little tie off band that I did. So let's see if I want it to be more in line with my other side. And this is why I only do four, because if you're messing around with more, it's trickier. I'm going to pull it to here and tie it off. And let's see how he looks. Tie off. That's a little better. Squidge him over a bit. 
So that is how I did the snout. Now we have work to do on the neck, don't we? I still feel the snout's over a bit, but never mind. I still think it's it's okay. I'm, I'm not too upset with that. Now, back to our head. I'm going to grab my loop. We have to go around on the outside loop. So if you remember, we go through from the front, from the back to the front, and then pop from the front to the back, and pop that little post out. Do you remember that? We do a single crochet. Now we're going to do 12 of these. There's one. Move your stitch marker to that stitch. And I'm sorry, we should be doing this in black. So let's change that because we want his neck to be black. Just as well we didn't go too far. So from the back to the front, from the front to the back. Now this is always fun because we've got a colour change. So through, add your loop. Okay. And then do your slip stitch. And put your stitch marker on there. And then again, we go through and poke out the little post. If you need help on working on the post, in my tips and tricks uh, playlist, you will find a slow, close-up video of how to work in the post. I will link that in the top right corner on, under that eye. Okay, it will be there, but also I'll put it in the description so that you can uh, see how to do it. So around we go now. As I said, we want to have we want to have twelve of these stitches in the back post. Let's see how many we've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight. Nine. Ten, eleven, and lucky last, twelve. You're going to skip across here to the first stitch because you miss the slip stitch. We're going to do a single crochet and you're going to move your stitch marker to that. That's our first stitch. The next stitch is going to be an increase. So one and two. Single crochet, increase. Okay, so that's the pattern that we're doing around single crochet, followed by an increase. Single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. Increase, single crochet, and finish on an increase. I like to just spread this out just a little bit. Like so. Okay, so that is the neck. Now, when you have a look at the main body, you've got your stitch here, cat hair here, next round. So we have six rounds, okay, that we have to do. The first round is going to be black. We're then going to do one, two, three, four, five in white, okay. And then we're going to do our next in um, in black. Yep. 
that's right so single crochet only the first one is black the next five will be white and I will meet you back when we have all done that because there's absolutely no reason for us to be doing five rounds of single crochet together we all know how to do that so I will catch you back when we've done five uh, one in black and five in white so I'm back and I've done my five rounds of white my one round of black now would be a good time to put the little arms on okay so we've got our two arms I've got one on my skewer if you remember just to prove that you don't have to have the uh, stitch markers that I have you can use anything pop your anchor bands on your hook pinch them tight hold them securely whatever you need to do so that they don't unravel okay now you're going to pick a spot where you feel that your first arm should be and you need three little areas so I'm going to go through the first one here pull your first anchor band through and keep it on your hook as you pop up through the second hole pull the second band through keep it on your hook as you pop through a third hole and draw your third band through flip over the body okay take a third band off you're going to link one and two together pop three back on and link three okay and then you're going to find a little spot at the back here under some loops to tie these in together securely with a tie off band don't do it too tightly because you might want to move where you have the arm let's take these ones off make sure it's nice and secure hold them so you don't they don't go walk about there we are let's find out I'm going to say that this is my uh, I want it to be the same so that will be three I'm going to try about hmm, let's see maybe here or maybe that's too close let's have a look how far back do I go I go one one back further than his ear so let's try and it's trial and error it is trial and error that's too far back I'm gonna try here and if we don't like it we'll move it one two three I think that one's a little bit too forward, so I'm going to move it all back one. So I'm going to put my hook through back here. This is where I'm going to move it to. This is going to be my first stitch. One, two, and three. Flip open the body. Take a third band off. Loop one and two. Pop three back on. Loop three and two, find some little bands at the back here to use as your tie off. Pull through and secure, like so. I think that's better. Yes, that's much better. This ear is a little bit wonky, but never mind. I don't think it matters. Now would be a good time to stuff his head. I use the polyfill stuffing, you don't have to, you can use tissue, you can use uh, cotton wool balls, you can use, chop up an old t-shirt, use the material from that or old scraps of yarn, um, anything really. The polyfill is very nice and light, which is why I like it especially, and uh, it's not very expensive. Now remember what I tell you about stuffing? Less is best. You don't want to put too much in. The, if you put too much in, the stitches will pull apart and you will see these great big uh, gaps between your stitches which will be full of stuffing and it looks really nasty. So I think that's going to be good for my little head. Okay, and that's his little snout. Now, i put that to one side. What we need to do is legs, okay, and we move these, move these. The rest of him is going to be in black for his little legs, okay, so pick up your hook and grab your stitch, your last stitch. Okay, now, 
we want to get to the center and I think the center is probably going to be about well you could pick here or here I'm going to say hmm let's see I'm going to pick probably this one as my center I'm just going to pop a little black band there just to remind me now if you count how many bands you've got you got this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen half of eighteen is nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine let's go through here let's put another black band just to see if we're even you do want to be even okay one two three four five six seven eight now what's tricky is if you look here at one two three four five six seven eight you're not counting this one or this one and then one two three four five six seven and eight so even though you've got you know nine eighteen around we're actually going to go with uh, the smaller number because we've got these two taking up um, a band each so we're going to do white I'm sorry, we're doing black. We're going to do a color change. Okay, add your loop, your first single crochet, move your stitch marker. You don't really need that on there at the moment. Do a second. Oh, computer's talking to me. I hate that it does that. Okay, there's a second stitch. Now, this is going to be, we're going to undo this little slip stitch we did here. This is going to be a slip stitch. You're going to go through like so. All right and add the other side to your hook. You're not going to tie it in any way. You're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Now, this fourth one is going to replace where we have this one here. So put your hook through here, take that marker band out taking the bottom pull it through and reclaim one over the other okay so this is either side for a leg so now we're going to go through our first stitch here and we're doing black and pop your stitch marker on that stitch that is going to be our first stitch for this round okay and we're going to do three rounds for the leg and one for the foot so that's because we're not differentiating between the foot that's going to be four rounds in total so around we go and it does get a little tricky when you go down the center chain but as some of you probably have done the uh, tiny tots before you're used to that now bear in mind you have a slip stitch here that little black stitch there is a slip stitch, so go into the real stitch. And now you sort of have to pull it apart to see what's going on. Okay, so we're going into this stitch next. And then looking, if you pull this to the side, you want to make sure that it's not twisted. You go through these two on the side. And then it's these two on the side and you're leaving the other side for the other leg these two on the right side there we go and that's the hardest part because after that it, it becomes quite easy now that was in a chain so this is our next stitch Otherwise you get a big hole. This is our first stitch. We're back to our first stitch. So go through your first stitch. Let's move your stitch marker. And we're doing another round.
Now I have, that was 10, this is 11, and this is 12. So I have 12 stitches around for this leg. My next round. Let me go again. No increases, no decreases, just going round and round. Oops, broken band, we'll get rid of that. Last round. Move your stitch marker. And this is my last stitch. I'm going to pop it on my stitch marker and we will close the feet off after we've done a bit of stuffing. But I have the other leg to do first, okay? So we don't need to close that up because we need to be able to stuff inside. So now, starting from the front, and the reason we're starting from the front is you want the skinnier edge. This is like a little teardrop. You want the skinnier edge to be on your hook, okay? So one of the things I want to make sure when I'm doing the next leg is I don't get too many stitches, um, otherwise one will look fatter than the other. So I'm going to go through the back loops of this band here in the centre and I'm going to start in my first stitch here by pulling a band through and doing a slip stitch like normal and I'm going to put my stitch mark on there and say that's my first stitch for this round. And then I'm going to go around so that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Now, if you look here, this is going to be a stitch that we need to go through because if we just go through this one, we get a big hole. So we need to go through the white. I've forgotten how many stitches we're in. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine. This is going to be ten. Eleven, and this last one here will be twelve. And then we need to go through this first stitch here and put our stitch marker on as our first stitch. Now, if you remember, we do four in total for the leg that was one, so this is two, three, and four. So we'll do this round and then we have two more rounds to do. 
but hopefully that will give us the right amount of stitches. It really doesn't matter if you end up with one extra. I mean, I've done some of the tiny tots where one leg has been 12 and one has been 13. I think it's better to have one extra stitch than it is to have a gaping hole where you can see all the stuffing hanging out. Try and make sure you don't do an increase. Come back here, you. I'm going to count my stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One more, which goes in here. <laughs> As I unravel everything. Twelve. Oh, I'm really really trying to unravel everything today back through my first stitch for my next round Whoopsie. Come on. There we are. And the last round. Move your stitch marker. Oops, through both loops. And we will put our last stitch on our stitch marker because we are going to get our stuffing and stuff our little creation here. So put that on so we don't lose that. Stretch this out a little bit to make room for our stuffing. So there's our little panda so far. All right, I'm going to get the stuffing and let's stuff our little creation. So let's get our stuffing ready. Here we go. Poke it through his little legs. I have to say, I'm a, I'm a big fan of pandas. I love pandas. Sort of wiggle it around so that it's evenly spread. You don't want it to sort of be bodged up on one side and not... Oh, and not the other. Okay, so poke in your stuffing. Hope that you don't have any holes. Oops, stuck to my nail. Get in there. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I hate strings of stuffing all over the place. Okay, let's get another little bit more for this leg. Okay, I think that's about enough. We don't want too, too much. Let's close up his little feetsies. So pick up your loop. And we're working in the inside loop for this. So you're going through from the front to the back. And then in the next stitch from the f back to the front. I always get my words muddled with that. And single crochet it. This is so that you can change direction of the foot. So instead of getting longer and longer legs, you change the direction of the stitch so that it starts to go in rather than out. I know you must think I'm crazy picking up my bands as soon as I get them in the wrong spot if I flip them somewhere. I'm so conscious of having cats and not wanting them to swallow a rubber band that as soon as I flick one, if it goes AWOL, I have to search for it, grab the vacuum cleaner or whatever. I just can't bear the thought of one of my beasties having a, a band stuck around their tongue or choking them. It's hard not to stretch the bands when you're doing decreases and fiddly little spots and whatnot. So try as hard as you can. I know we're not doing decreases just yet, but we will be. But try as hard as you can not to stretch the bands because otherwise they will get misshapen. They will relax back into shape, but you don't want these big holes. Okay, so now I'm back to my first stitch. I'm going through my first stitch and I'm going to do a single crochet. I'm going to take my stitch marker off because all I'm going to do now is decreases until I can get to a stage where I can tie off my foot. And I have to say, working with black bands is tricky sometimes. You can't see. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just can't see. I should clean my glasses. <laughs> so just doing decreases. I'm not doing hidden decreases. I'm doing the full going through both loops on both stitches so that it's a secure decrease strong decrease I should say more than anything not secure and I'm going to go into this spot here pull a band back tie off nice and tight pull this bit just so that it's evened out and then going through the back I'm going to poke out through the middle grab that band that tie off band and put it back inside my creation so that my little foot is finished like that. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Find your loop and we're going to do working in the front post to change direction so all the way around in the front post single crochet Move your stitch marker
try and poke that stuffing down with your finger as you uh, as you do this you don't want that popping back up and annoying you and getting into your stitches does anybody ever feel like they've got pieces of stuffing in their eyes I have really sensitive eyes and I always feel like I've got pieces of stuffing <laughs> and I know I haven't paranoia strikes again huh And this will be our last one. And now we're going to do our decreases. So take your stitch marker off, find your stitch, and let's do decreases all the way around till we can tie off. One. Find our next stitch. Come here, you. One. And, oh, I'm trying to get rid of this. <laughs> The stuffing, get in there. <laughs> Where's my next stitch? One and two. This one's being finickety. It all wants to come out and play. And to tie off, oops, just one band, nice and tight, hit the camera, spread this out, and then from the back up to the center, grab the end of that band and pull it back in, like so. And there we have our little panda. Now, you could do, I should mention, shouldn't I? If you wanted to, you could do a little tail on his bottom. And to do that, find a little spot where you think the tail should be, maybe about here. All right, and you'll pull back a band like so. And what you want to do... Pull back one. Oops. You want to go back into that spot. Pull back two. Back into that spot. Pull back three. And then pull a single band through all of them. Like so. And you can do as many. I mean, you can do four, five, whatever. However many you can fit. If you wanted to do a little more, just keep going back through. Like so, pull your band through all of them, and then what you're going to do, find a spot down the bottom here, like that, put either side of that single band on, and you're going to pull through and tie off, and then this gets pulled back inside the panda to the other side, and it's a bit tricky because you want to pull it so that the knot is on the inside. Let's see if I can show you better. I need a bit of space. Go through from the front and pull it back. Maybe that will be easier to show you. Pull it back and puff out the little tail like so 
I can still see my tie off band, which is going to annoy me. <laughs> Pull it back inside there we go there we go so there's his little tail if you want to do a little tail you can if you don't want to you don't have to oh it's come loose again I'm going to tuck it in there we go that's better there all right, so if you want to do a tail, superb. If you don't, you don't have to. He looks, I haven't done one on this one. I think they look perfectly fine without. But there you go. If you like the video, big thumbs up would be appreciated. And you can subscribe to my channel. It's completely free and you get to find out when I have a new video out. So I hope you like him. Take care. Bye.